Tom Saint? His replacement. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Welcome to Fabled Hunters. I'm Yanji. I'm Saint. And we're gonna open some stuff. Yeah, we are. So it's Tales of Aria just came out saying, did you get a chance to open any boxes? Of course. And uh, the first place I thought of was Montezzi Comics because it was opening day, Aria's release day, and none of the boxes had made it. So I went oh, down no. the block. Huh? Oh, no. Yeah, it sucks when you don't have product to crack on your release day. Yeah. But I paid a slight premium, went to the local game store, went down the block, and supported my LGS, Montezzi Comics on 5th Ave in Midtown Manhattan. That's the place to go for Manhattanites. And yeah, um, yeah they, uh, they hooked me up with a case. It was great. I also had a stream later that night for the Flesh and Blood Graded group on Facebook. Uh, I'm an admin there. So uh, we opened it up. Uh, we were looking for the core shim and I told everybody we'd give a lucky viewer a free box if opened up core shim. That's yeah, did it, did it happen? Uh, unfortunately, it did not. It was not as epic as that time you pulled the Cheyenne. Oh man, you remember that? I do remember that. Yeah, that was I think times. a lot of people remembered it. They got the rest of the box when you pulled the Cheyenne, and it was it was an epic time. We've we've done some crazy stuff on the uh, Fab Grade group. Uh, we've done some crazy stuff on Unseals as well. So check it out, guys. Uh, but that's not it. We have our critical games and hobbies. Shirts on to uh, give Don. a big hearty shout out to Don Eichbacher. Yep, yep. Um, he uh, is such a pillar of the community. Uh, honestly, not that many people reached out, the people that have been supportive of Fabled Hunters in the past. Don, however, he stepped up. He's like, Saint, you need some extra cases? I got some cheap cases. And I'm like, wait, do I? <laughs> well, do I? And uh, he came through. So, okay. yeah, right after I went to Montessi, my local game store, to get a case, uh, I think the next morning, Don came through with a box of cases, and I couldn't wait for Fabled Hunters. I just opened up the first uh -huh. case. Okay. It was right in the middle, and what did you get? yeah, well, check out what happened. I have it on video. Oh, man. Here I am, being a freaking addict. Look at this. New openings of the day. Pack 11. What? This is sex on a card. It is so beautiful. The print quality of the set, man. Oh, God, guys. Well, it's a little right left, but oh my God, this is beautiful. Just finished the case of the day. Good opening. Really enjoyable after a long day of work. Six majestic foils. So about 1.5 per box. Cold foils, the buckler, the honing hood. This case was spicy. It had crown of seeps, legendary, new horizon, and of course, the Corsham, the fabled. What a case, guys. It's literally opening happiness. Thanks again. Don A of Critical Games and Hobbies. Lucky cases. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. Are you done hunting? No. I mean, it was pack 11. I'm, I'm probably not going to be done hunting till pack 11,000. <laughs> 11,000. That's, that's, like, that's a lot of packs. Yeah. Speaking of a lot of packs, uh, I mentioned this on my live stream. I opened up uh, probably five figures in packs on Monarch. So. It wouldn't be that different. And when I was opening up Monarch, Monarch was like $500, $550 a box. I opened up 200 cases of Monarch. 200 cases? Yeah. Are you sure you only 200 boxes? No, no. Two, oh, wow. eight, 800 boxes of Monarch. Okay. I, I, I made sure to open up every single day and just keep pulling. And um, I submitted the top 20% of my cold foils that mm -hmm. I picked out. We're going to talk about the Beckett results another time. Um, okay. I mentioned them as well on the, the graded group on the stream, and the quality was just not the same. Now, this is Monarch, and Monarch was, let's let's not even call it 500. Let's call it, because I, I dollar cost averaged when yeah. it was going down. I, I bought them for anywhere from like 325 to 450. Okay. 
right? I, I bought throughout that range and I still opened it because I really like the product. I've got to say, um, Tales of Ari is even better. This is a much better set than Monarch. Mm -hmm. The print quality is better. And it's a fifth of the price. It's $100 a box right now, right? Well, let's talk about that because I feel like every set that Flesh and Blood comes out with mm -hmm. is just like a completely new experience when it comes to the market. Yes. So Crucible of War, I think, uh, was kind of the start for a lot of people when they started having their eyes on the game. Yeah. And so there was like this like crazy meteoric rise where it jumped up from what like three four hundred dollars a box to like over a thousand that was damn evil investors, <laughs> so evil investors. yeah uh but then monarch kind of was carried by the that like wave of hype yeah and then so the pre-order price was really high too much hype on the flippers thankfully i just want to say i think the flippers have gone to some other games like Meta poo poo or <laughs> Meta -poo -poo. some some d ghosts spirits d spirits something like that. Good riddance. The real you know true hardcore people that are dug in believe in the brand. They're they're here now and they're the ones reaping the rewards of hundred dollar boxes. Sorry, go ahead, Reggie. Yeah, well, I was just gonna say that you mentioned hundred dollar boxes. Now you can get a first edition box for about one hundred one hundred and ten. Yep. Uh, I think after the fees or you could go direct you yeah. can support any of the Facebook groups I, I think recently I think recently the price has come up a, a little bit okay um, since then but the the movement I think is towards first edition boxes not being this like crazy super volatile like investment vehicle whatever like you want to call it yeah um, and now I think it's everything's starting to make a little bit more sense Okay. It's, a, it's a it's a booster box, and I feel like Tales of Aria is I think the first set that LSS has really like I think hit like the supply just at, right. at, at a good yeah. level. They've got the formula down because from what I've heard, and I talked to a lot of people in Flesh and Blood, I've heard that there is no definitive date for mm -hmm. unlimited release. Right. I've also little birdies have also told me that Unlimited has been already printed, the first wave. Okay. But they don't need to release it because there's enough Tales of Aria. Tales of Aria first edition at these prices, non-scalped prices, non-inflated prices, they're here to reward the actual player base and collector base that believes in the game. Mm -hmm. And right now, um, because of uh, the flippers getting burned in Monarch first edition, there aren't that many flippers. And hopefully the true collectors, the true players, they're not here to flip. They're here to say, wow, I really like the product. Like me, I'm going to open up 11,000 packs most likely. What is that? That's 400, 500 boxes, probably more than that. Okay. I'm going to be straight up, probably more than because it's just so nice. I want to find um, the first black label cold foil ever. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, have to overcome the pesky corner. Yeah, yeah, but the pesky corners are no longer that pesky in um, okay. Tales of Aria. They're really good. The print quality, like I said, um, you know, people made fun of me and Rudy and Open Boosters when we were talking about the centering. The centering, the centering, the centering is <laughs> good. The surface is good. The corners are good. The edges are good. I mean, outside of WTR and corners aside in WTR, there's not been a higher quality product than Tales of Aria. I gotta say WTR, mm -hmm. outside the corners, was a more, you know, well put together product. There was the pesky corner issues only with the cold foils, but otherwise, Tales of Aria is really setting the bar for print quality. So, Sam, actually I wanted to ask you, uh, you haven't just been collecting Flesh and Blood, you've been collecting a lot of other uh, cards as well, yeah. like Magic. Um, ha has there been another set that you've seen in the past where when it released, didn't have a lot of fanfare, a lot of hype around it, but then ended up outperforming the expectations? Yes, but let me give you a direct comparison okay. as well. Let me give you the opposite. Sure. Um, there was Iconic Masters, mm -hmm. and there was Masters 25, two uh, Masters sets in Magic the Gathering that were super hyped, but then after the release, people opened up the boxes. They're like, the cards are good, but they're not that good and then they tanked maybe they're up to three hundred dollars at the beginning yeah. but they tanked to about a hundred dollars but then three to five years later they're back up well past 300 I, I think these days are 
back up around 300. That kind of reminds me of what Monarch is like. Sure. However, on the flip side, the good sets. There was um, Ultimate Masters, and there was Modern Horizons 1, mm -hmm. and even Modern Horizons 2, but it's that's still relatively new. They came out, there was a good amount of hype, and Wizards actually delivered. Mm -hmm. Wizards actually, like, actually came up with, like, followed through with what they said they would follow through, they balanced it out, um, the value was actually in the cards, the presentation of the cards was amazing, um, and then it just kept going up. I think uh, Ultimate Masters started out at uh, 230 to 250 a box. Mm -hmm. Then it went up to 480, 500 for a little point. Then everybody sold and everybody flipped. But then it never went as low as 250 a box. I think it went back up to like 350. And now what is it, Yunji? I think you're familiar. Like 400, yeah, 50, yeah, 480. Around, around 450, 500. Yeah, yeah, 450 plus. See, yeah. I, I have a rough idea. And Modern Horizons has just been fire. Modern Horizons 1 has been fire nonstop. And hey, you guys heard it here first. Tales of Aria is more Modern Horizons, Ultimate Masters, and Modern Horizons 2. It's closer to that than it is Iconic Masters or Masters 25, which is kind of like Monarch. However, if you're patient in both cases, and you believe in the brand, you believe in the product, and you just enjoy it for what it is, a card game and a game, a hobby, then you're gonna do just fine. Yeah, I I think that it'll be kind of interesting because Monarch and Tales of Aria are basically like the two sets that were pretty much like available for, for whoever like wanted to kind of get into the game initially. General public like, 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 yeah. like it was available like that's when you could just like you could buy it when it came out. Yeah. And so we have to remember that like these these sets are less than a year old. They are. And so it'll be kind of interesting to, to see how things move. Like the entire game is even less than, uh, it's it's like two years, less than two years old, right? Absolutely. And yep. so to see how it's going to move, like I I think for the comparisons that you gave earlier, I mean like Modern Horizons didn't really see an upwards price trajectory until like years after it, it started to print. I would say like, six months, Modern Horizons 1. I mean, let's just say it never went under 150. Yeah, yeah, then it was at like 170, 180. Yeah, yeah right? but then to like to when, when it's now it's almost like 300, right? Yeah, it's it's like 200. Like really going yeah, yeah, like yeah. a year or two. And so I'm saying, like, I think it'll be interesting to see like the price movement when these boxes, right now you can get them pretty readily available. Yep. Yeah. But uh, it'll, be, it'll be interesting for sure. Once they stopped printing MH1, yeah. um, and once MH2 was about to come out, then it just skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. They were stable for a little bit, but then they went up very, very aggressively. Yeah. And I'm just saying, TOA, as successful as it is, uh, as innovative as the IP is currently being, they keep like James did that exclusive interview, and he said he'd keep the player base on their toes. And here we are, right? Yeah. And I would, I have to give this set probably like a 9.0 out of 10. Okay, that's high praise. Com I mean, yeah, compared to. Uh, Monarch, I'll be honest, I think that was more like a 7.5. In hindsight, okay. it was like a 7.5. I was a little hyped because Monarch, just like you said, that was the first set that was readily available to yeah. me. Like, people are like, evil investor, evil investor. I'm not that evil. The people that bought, you know, uh, WTR Alpha for $60 to $80 a box, I could call them evil, but I'm not. I'm, I'm buying from them right now at... 40, no, 60 times what they paid for it, you it's know, hefty, it, in the 4,000s, huh? That's a yeah, hefty premium. It, it is a hefty premium, like 50, 60 times what, what they paid for it. Right. I never got WTR, I never got Arcane, I never got even Crucible at market, and here we are, like, we're in it together, we're getting, we got um, Monarch at market, which didn't turn out well so far. Well, I think Time will tell. I think I think it's too early to call. It is. So I yep. think I think the the takeaway message is like for for any kinds of things. If you're if you're like always like paying attention to the prices, like they, they go up, they go down, whatever. Yeah. Most of the money, even like when you said like for the people who who got into WTR early on, mm -hmm. I'm sure like WTR when it first came out, even like wasn't that attractive. Of course not. They're like, what the hell is this? Yeah, yeah. So, Four heroes? This is boring. <laughs> yeah, and they're so, all repetitive. There's three different colors with the same card. What the hell? 
how, how the hell did they get to play this game? Uh, yeah. Probably. I mean, I can just imagine what the haters were saying. So, right? I, I just think that, I think the takeaway for anybody who's watching at this point in the video is just like, if you believe in the game, if you think it's a good game, if you think that the company is going to do the right thing moving forward, then... Yeah. Or if you saw with your own eyes at the calling, yeah, yeah. or at any of the callings, how hype this game and the community and everything is, then just uh, stay the course. Yeah, right? I, 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 think. I think we have to lift that from Rudy and uh, say, stay the course. All right. All right. Well, um, thanks again to Don A, Critical Games and Hobbies, for getting us some product. We'll be opening some of this real soon. Uh, remember to uh, watch. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the, hit the post bell notification. Oh, yeah. Now. Twiddle the bell a little bit <laughs> so that you can uh, be up to date on notifications. And uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye.